Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Another video today, another tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to remove the side fairings and the tank on the Africa Twin. I will be doing a valve adjustment after that and uh, I have to remove all the stuff. As you see, I already took off my crash bars. I have a heat crash bar, so whatever crash bars you are using, just remove them out of the way. Yeah. Most of the time you can get away by just loosening the screws and uh, pulling them apart a little bit. And as long as you just want to take off the fairings and get into the uh, air boxes or air filters. So that, uh, for that, you don't have to remove the heat crash bars completely. Just loosen them up. Since I'll be needing more room, I took it out of the way. And I also have here the um, air dam that has to be removed as well. So let's get into this video. But uh, if you are new to this channel, uh, don't forget to subscribe for another similar tutorials and there is uh, many other tutorials on my channel uh, If you want to start doing stuff uh, yourself on your bike uh, Follow the instructions you have just a little bit of mechanical skills. You can get through it It's a lot of time to do anything on an Africa twin It's uh, pretty painful because uh, there's so much stuff that you have to take off before you get to your component that you want to work on So as I said, first thing what I'll do, I'll just remove that air dam and that I'll do the bolts as well for everything. Normally, if you don't have that, so just undo those bolts uh, that you have here. So that's holding on uh, four bolts. In my case, there's two different sizes. Nice to have that magnetic tank ring. <laughs> All right, so that came off. Next thing I recommend removing your seat. I'm not gonna film that because everybody should know that. So you get a couple screws here also, right? There's one here, one here, and that's a five millimeter Allen key. So next you want to remove those pieces right here. Also five mils. There is three Velcros that are holding this in place, which are gonna have to look to replace or that you took them too many times or and the other piece just came off. So I have to re-glue that stuff on later on. I like to put the screw back where it's supposed to be this way. I don't lose them and I don't have to look for them because I'll know that they have to be taken off that way. And then I'll move over to the other side. I'll do the same thing. Next thing, there is a few push pins that you have to disconnect. And uh, there is one, one right here and one under your uh, power accessory plug. And same thing on the other side. To remove the push pins, I'm just using a little tool hook with the point, uh, with the point and that's, uh, that works really well to remove those. To remove the push pins, you just press the Press the pin inside, pry it out of there. I'll show you in a second. So this is the push pin. Normally, it's sitting flush like this. So when that's sitting inside the fairing, you just press that in, inside here, and then you pry it up uh, from, the, from its location. So don't lose them. And I would recommend if you do, um, break one of those, uh, get yourself a package and a few extra ones. You can get them on eBay or a lot of other places will have those. 
So that's one right there. We gotta remove the other one. You hear a little, usually a little click once it goes in. So don't force that. And then there's two on the other side here. One right there. One just a little bit towards the front. So there we go. So we get those loosened up. We have one, two, three, four. Four clips to remove, uh, push pins to remove. She does four because there's also two in here. Okay, that's one side. If you do that a few times, <laughs> you'll memorize it by then. All right, so I got all those push pins out of here now. So now you should be able to slowly pry everything away from it. So there's a few rubber grommets in here. I always like to start on this side on the bottom here because that's the easiest to grab and then start pulling gently, work it slowly, not to break nothing. Okay, so that's one panel and the second one is pretty much the same story. Be really careful because it's so easy to break those things here. I already broke it once. I, I was able to uh, set the screw in there with the glue and it's holding it again. But I think what I will do eventually, I'll just drill it through here and uh, make it as simple as that. There oh. Yeah, so what I will do here, I will just put, it, put it some screws and that will be problem solved. So now the bike is naked. All the side panels are removed. So now to remove the tank, you gotta take this plastic piece off there. This is just sitting on the clips. At this point, because we took the screws out. One more, just gently, gently wiggle it and that will come out. Now to remove the tank, there's another two push pins that are holding the plastic piece that's holding the um, latch mechanism. Good. So what you want to do next, there's two clips here that are holding the hard wiring harness. So you want to pull that up and uh, release the, the clips here so you, you, you have a loose wires. As uh, down below, there's four more of those uh, clips to loosen up the electrical tra uh, tray. So that one is quite uh, hard to get into. Because we have to get the tray loose so we can pop this bracket out of there. bastard there so it doesn't give you too much room especially I have a, a Easter Beaver power supply here too okay so I got the harness tray all loose now now you want to undo the two screws that are on the sides that are holding the latch uh, mechanism, seat latch mechanism. So there is a 10 millimeter socket. Just be careful when you're pulling that out, so hold that screw with your finger, otherwise you may lose it. And here you have your latch mechanism, so it's a good idea to disconnect it at this point, so you can take everything out of the way. Okay, 
and that gives you the access to the bolt that is holding your fuel tank. So I don't know if that was really necessary to take that. Um, those pins that are holding that uh, electronics tray, but maybe that gives you a little bit of leverage there and room to put your hands in. So now we have one more bolt that's holding the tank and that is a 10 mil as well. Once this bolt is out, I should be able to lift the tank. Oh, that's why they're saying it's supposed to be loosened up because... There we go. So we got it lifted up. disconnect the breeder hoses and the electrical components here and also the fuel line. Be careful with that plastic fitting on that fuel line because that's probably the hardest not to damage anything. So you have here a few connections. This is your main uh, fuel line. So there's that little thing that you're supposed to release and pull it out. Then you have one connection right here for your electrical. And then you have your two breeder call hoses. You can't mix that up because everything is a different size as you see. Uh, so that fits on the pretty much one way. So this is how you take off uh, all the stuff uh, to get into the air box right here. So this is your air box and that will be my next step to remove that. So this is it. Uh, I removed the tank uh, and I'm ready for, uh, as you see, it was a little bit of work. To, to get to this point, uh, it probably takes about, uh, I would say, solid two hours to remove all your crash bars and uh, tank and uh, air box. So right now I have my uh, intake uh, plugged in, everything is out of the way and I'll be ready to remove uh, the rest of the components.